Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel. Now, after a little bit of a lull in the workshop build, we are back full steam ahead. And this episode is about installing that door behind me there. Now, this door I was actually given for free, which is fantastic. The only thing, little thing was it had a little crack in the top corner, didn't seem too bad. So I, I put some epoxy onto that and it seemed to set fine. And I'd had it stored in the garage for a little while. Now, I have never installed a door before, okay? So much so uh, that I put a post up to my Instagram followers just to double check which was the inside and which was the outside of the door before I started to install it. So anyway, uh, that's for a little bit later on. I started off with a little bit of an issue before we'd even started because when I built the frame, part of the modular theme, I didn't factor in actually having a sill. Uh, uh, my mind was cast back to actually installing the windows and my YouTube friend, uh, Carl Pope, uh, Carl Pope Woodcraft, got in touch with me and said, make sure you've got a sill on it because he had a similar problem and he had water coming in, on, in underneath. So I thought it was equally as important to have that on the door. So before we even started with the door in, uh, installation, I had to uh, sort a sill out basically. So I tried the likes of B&Q and stuff for a UPVC one. It needed to be narrow and most of them were kind of like this. So I thought, why not build my own? Now, the first thing I needed to do was select a suitable piece of wood. Now I have this pressure treated hardwood decking, which I think is like a Maranti or a teak. I thought this actually would have been quite suitable. Now this was one of my uh, recent monumental skip dives, so it's more than paid for itself recently. So I cut it to size at the mitre saw, and then I took it to my table saw to put a bit of a chamfered edge on it, just to help with the water runoff. The next stage was to just, just to do a little bit of sanding, which I did at 120 and 180 grit. And it was starting to look really smart already. The issue I found the following morning though, was I didn't like the look of these little marks, thinking they might have been woodworm. Now, on reflection, they're probably actually just some pin marks from a uh, from a delivery note or something, but I wasn't actually willing to take that chance. And I did have some woodworm killer. So I gave it a couple of coats of that and then left it overnight. Then it was time to put the finish on. And this one, I'm actually using Osmo UV protection oil. Now this stuff came out tops in my epoxy resin outdoor project from last year. So I had some left over and I was really impressed with it. And it is starting to look the business. So the next step is to cut the bottom of the frame out from when I made the modular frame for the door. And then I had to get my multi-tool to cut out the OSB board, which is at 11 mil, to accommodate the uh, sill, because obviously I haven't factored that in in the original measurements. And then finally, before actually installing the sill, I used my dish fish, which is really good stuff. I know it's not intended for that, but it's like a fibrous uh, fiberglass uh, coating that you can paint on. Then it was to cut some little uh, bits out on the side of the sill to accommodate it. Now this next step uh, tip I got from uh, Keith Ragenbone Brown on Instagram when I was asking him about his recently installed door. And apparently the tip is to have the sill a couple of millimeters higher on the door hinge side, which helps with if the door starts sagging or something along those lines. Anyway, thanks for the tip, Keith. And then I got loads of silicone just to help create a watertight seal before applying the sill.
And I also got this tip from one of my Instagram followers, Ed, uh, the Black Wolverine. Now, Ed suggested, I had some of this uh, three mil rubber strip left over from, it was actually from Peter Millard's Traxor workshop. And he suggested actually putting something like that down. Uh, so when you actually apply, when you actually fix the door down, it'll form a better seal. And I thought it was a great idea. So Pam's dad, Dave, very kindly came along for the day again to help me out. And it was a case of installing the door. Now it went in reasonably straightforward, as you can see. It'd be better with them. And then, oh, we can't get that in because it's too soon. You got any more of them, Max? I've only got two. But well, at least it's, it's in place now. So. Then, as you can see, is a case of actually tapping some packers in. Plenty of them, to be honest. Uh, for it, I had a space of about four or five mil around the outside of the door, which I factored in in the measurements when I built the frame. And you'll also notice, and again, this was a tip I got from uh, when I posted asking for some advice on Instagram a while back, is that the actual frame around the door is uh, double skinned with the timber. So it's treated three by twos and they're doubled all the way around. Now, as this was a second hand door that was gifted to me, it already had some holes. Um, so Dave, we put some silicone in before actually driving the fixings in. Now, again, another tip I got, fantastic to you folk who really do help me out, is to use uh, concrete screws because they don't need, you don't need to put any plugs in and then um, use uh, traditional fixings or whatever. So concrete screws will go directly into the timber. And the other thing I had to be really careful with as well, which is why I was using a combi drill driver and not an impact driver, is not to drive them in too hard because it does bend the plastic, the UPVC. So you have to be very careful when you're actually driving them in. And one or two occasions I had to ease it off back uh, because I'd driven them in too far. Then it was onto the favorite bit, which everybody enjoys, which is using the expanding foam gun. Now this comes in handy, obviously, because you've got those little gaps in between the packers. And this, if you can get it right in, will fill up and also acts as a bonding adhesive as well. And I've done this both on the inside and the outside. And then you can see that is pretty much it. Now you can also see behind me that I've uh, boxed it in with, now some of this stuff was just off cuts of OSB that I had, but I put the insulation in first and then put the foil tape and I'll show you some, some pictures now. I didn't do any footage of this because I've got a whole video on this on how I made the modular walls. So you can have a little, little look at that for yourselves in my uh, history of it, if you like. And um, it, do you know what? I'm really happy with it and it does look quite smart and I'm definitely gonna chalk it down to beginner's look. Uh, touch wood, it went really well. It opens and closes fine, it locks fine. It looks really neat actually because I was a bit worried a white UPVC door on a woodwork shop, but do you know what? It looks smart and it's now, as you can see, we are fully watertight inside. So it's been a fantastic couple of weeks where progress is really being made. I'm gonna have another video out next week about the electrics, because as you see, it's nice and bright in here. The electrics have been done as well. Now it's not gonna be an electrics installation video because I had a contractor and electrician to come in, but I'm gonna show you the prep work I did over the winter before um, when we had the, the garden dug out there, just to give you a bit of an idea as to how we done it and it might be of a little bit of help to you. So firstly, I've got to say a huge thank you to all my followers on Instagram and Facebook who really are a very helpful 
bunch because I post advice questions all the time and I've got links in the description if you want to have a look at um, any of the stuff I put out there and you know what you're so helpful to me because as I say I've never installed a door before uh, me and Dave we've never done anything like this before so to, I couldn't have done that without any without your help folks really do appreciate it and that's pretty much it for this one uh, thanks for watching and as ever take care Look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, folks.